Welcome back. We now give you the details of the top stories. I'm Randolph Janias. The Spokes Authoritative and Information Team formed with notification number 75-2011 of the President's Office, dated 10 August 2011, was abolished as of today. President's Office of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar issued a notification number 86-2012 on 14 November. It can be translated as Abolition of Spokes Authoritative and Information Team. It was signed by Teng Sein, President of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar. Still on that story, the Union Government of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar issued notification number 81-2012 concerning the formation of the Information Committee on 15 November. According to subsection A, section 24 of Union Government Law, the Information Committee was formed to take responsibility for the distribution of news on politics, economics, security matters, the military, and disaster-related affairs by holding press conferences and issuing press statements when necessary. The committee was chaired by Deputy Minister at the President's Office, U Ang Tain. The members are Deputy Director General, U Ye Min, of the President's Office, General Manager U Ye Nang of News and Periodicals Enterprise under the Ministry of Information, Director U Mo Cho Ang of the President's Office, and Director U Ang So Tain of the Union Government's Office. Director U Nyan Tun of the President's Office was appointed as the Secretary of the Committee. The responsibilities of the Committee are A. To distribute timely information on politics, economics, security matters, military and disaster-related affairs. B. To hold press conferences when necessary. C. To issue press statements. D. To act as both proactive and reactive media for politics, economics, and social affairs. E to distribute timely information to domestic and foreign media, local organizations, and the news agencies of international organizations, and F, to coordinate with information teams from respective ministries. The notification was signed by Zotan Tin, Secretary of Union Government. Meanwhile, Vice President Dr. Samal Kam met Korean delegation led by former Prime Minister of the Republic of Korea, Kungo at the Presidential Palace in Naypyito on 15th of November. Also present at the call were Union Minister for Labor, Employment and Social Security, Umami, the Deputy Ministers and Department Heads. The two sides discussed on progress of rural development and poverty alleviation in Myanmar, the previous implementation for the rural development in Korea through new village activities and paddy cultivation. In other news, Speaker of Pidang Su and Amuta Huto Uki Ami received a U.S. delegation led by Special Representative and Policy Coordinator Patrick Murphy at the Luto Building in Nipito on Thursday. Amuta Huto Deputy Speaker Umia Nyein and officials from Luto office were among the attendees. Myanmar and EU discussed cooperation opportunities in Myanmar, democratization, and peacemaking process. The Speaker received Vice Chairman of EU and Advisor of the Head of Foreign Affairs and Security Affairs, Robert Cooper and Party, at the Luto Building in Nipito on Thursday. Responsibilities of Luto and its implementations for the interest of the nation and the people, in line with democratic practices, were also explained during the meeting. The U.S. expressed its recognition of Myanmar democratization process. Pito Luto Speaker Tura Ushiman received the U.S. delegation led by Special Representative and Policy Coordinator Patrick Murphy at the Luto Building in Nipito on Thursday, rendering assistance for Myanmar political processes and boosting cooperation between the two parliaments were the highlights of the discussion. Moving on, 13th day session of Pito Luto had continued at the Pito Luto Hall in Nipito on 15 November. With the attendance of Peter Luto Speaker Tura Ushiman and 380 representatives. Trainees from Myanmar Development Resource Institute and Center for Strategic and International Studies observed it. Two Luto representatives raised questions on administrative affairs and were answered by the Deputy Minister for Home Affairs, 
Police Major General Cho Cho Tun. Concerning forestry sector, two Zluto representatives raised questions and Deputy Minister for Environmental Conservation and Forestry, Uemi Mao, answered them. He said prevention against environmental pollution and conservation of natural resources will be carried out in coordination with government departments and organizations and NGOs. Concerning the questions on construction sector, two Zluto representatives raised questions and Deputy Minister for Construction Usotin answered them. He said the damaged bridges along Michina Putao Road will be replaced with temporary bridges and new bridges will be constructed when security condition is better. In reply to the other question, he said overpass roads in Yangon are being constructed in line with law. Usai Mountain of Lecha constituency submitted a proposal on construction of Loilim Tibor Road by setting up a special project. Deputy Minister Usatin said that since it is an ongoing project, it should be kept as a record. Uang Lin of South Okalapa constituency submitted a proposal on ownership of farmlands. Deputy Minister for Home Affairs Police Major General Cho Cho Tun replied that it should be submitted to relevant region or state government. And the proposal should be recorded and monitored. Uang Mi of Gan constituency submitted a proposal concerning reformation of unused lands in the forest reserved into farmlands in line with law. Deputy Minister for Environmental Conservation and Forestry, Uemi Mao, said it can be done when land utilization laws and rules and regulations are prescribed. The proposal will be recorded. Luther decided to record and monitor the three proposals. Ungun Mao of Hakka constituency submitted the proposal urging union government to pass directives to regard state days as Gazette holidays. Union Minister at the President's Office, Uso Mao, said it will be informed to the state governments and the proposal should be recorded. The proposal was amended as the union government will inform states to pronounce state days as Gazette holidays and so they decided to record and monitor it. Member of Bill Committee Uso Ray presented the committee's report on the bill amending state constitutional tribunal law sent by Amita Hluto without any amendment. Hluto decided to approve the bill as approved by the Amita Hluto. 79 trainees, including in charge of postgraduate certificate in peace, democracy and development training course 2, 2012 of Center for Strategic and International Studies of Myanmar Development Resource Institute observed ongoing Pito Hluto session. Amita Hluto fifth regular session continued on its 13th day in Luto building in Naypyito on 15 November. Umang So Pyu of Rakhine State Constituency 4 asked on exemption of paddy collected by Tamado. Deputy Minister for Defense, Major General Chon Yu, replied. Concerning the question raised by three Luther representatives, Deputy Minister at the President's Office, U Ang Tain, responded. Um Yan Yen of Yangon Region Constituency 7 submitted a proposal for discussion on Bill amending state constitutional tribunal law. Udinye of Yangon Region Constituency 11 seconded the proposal and the Luto Speaker announced to discuss the bill.
Member of a Mutual Hluto Bill Committee, Usangi, read out the report of the committee on Bill Amending State Constitutional Tribunal Law. Two Hluto representatives discussed on the bill. Deputy Attorney General Utun Tun U made clarifications on the bill. With the majority of votes, Luto decided to approve the bill committee's decision. Um Yanying of Yangon Region Constituency 7 submitted a proposal to approve bill amending state constitutional tribunal law, which then was supported by Luto Human Rights Committee, Utun Yi. With the majority of votes, Luto approved the bill. Concerning the proposal urging union government to make necessary arrangements with a team comprised of national races submitted by Uso Tunya Aung of Kain State Constituency 5, 10 Luto representatives discussed in support of the proposal. Deputy Minister for Immigration and Population Uwini explained measures taken for collecting nationwide census in 2014 in cooperation with local national races. With the favor of the Luto representatives, the proposal was approved. More news are coming up. Please stay tuned.